Just had a thought here for um, a small tip that may not have occurred to everybody. Uh, small drills, grinding, pain in the butt, not very easy and the general consensus which I tend to go along with most of the time is if they're much too small they're not very expensive, get new ones but I hate finishing with anything if I can keep it going. So what I'm suggesting here is a few um, I was going to say tools, items which can help in the process. I've got a number of honing tools, shall we say. They're basically diamond impregnated in one form or another. Uh, this one is a Lansky, you can get those off eBay. And that one's meant to be a fine cut. And then we've got a series of three which are easy lap diamond and stone or oh, it's the easy lap diamond and stone company uh, that's a fine and medium and of course and then from way way back and they're very worn out I've got another set which were from the UK again there's a coarse medium and fine now the fine, these, these two are pretty well worn, but what they've got is tiny little dots of diamond powder, I guess. It might be possible to see little dots on there. So the idea is very simple, but just as a means to keep a small drill cutting. Uh, I've got here... I'll try some close-ups in a minute as a separate entity because I may have to use another lens. I haven't got a macro on this. But in terms of equipment, there is a small pin vise holding a sixteenth bit. Now I wouldn't want to regrind this for the for the fun of it. But if that can be freshened on its cutting edges, that's useful. And then Depending what depending what you've got, there's some other pin vices. The shiny one there is, uh, I forget where it came from, double-ended mini collets, again pin vice. The reason I mention those is that's a very easy way to hold a drill when you're working on it. And my suggestion is simply take your trusty sharpie and make a mark on the cutting faces on the ground area and sometimes if you look at the depending how the light is if you look at the cutting face of a, of a drill whatever size sometimes you will see a slight line indicating the wear I'm trying to find out of these one that shows it fairly well this 3 16th shows it quite well. I'll try and get some close-ups. All we're going to do is make a mark, blacken that up, blacken the other one up. Then, using one of these, shall we call them lapping sticks, for want of a better word, and if these are fixed up in a pin vise, something easy to hold and then however you do it, however much you want to get in the light and then using, I forgot to mention <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is the tool, uh, the uh, device shall we say for doing this sort of work I sometimes wear it when I'm on lathe work. So we put that on, just work across concentrating concentrating on the area of the cutting face without losing the positive rake behind um, until you just get a slight sharpening. This may work. I've got Sharpie on there I'm using the 316 so if I go much smaller it'll be hard to see. 
and we've got Sharpie on both faces. Now you might just about see if I can get focus there. You see that edge looks a little bit torn, slight reflection. Same on that one. So I'm just going to dress those a little bit and see if we can get a change. I did notice however that the top of the flute, this area just above my rather old nail, is uh, slightly worn. So in fact this one would need reground, but I'm using this size because it tends to show a bit more. But I've actually removed the sharpie, most of it, I've used a coarser cut initially, and you perhaps can see there's a little bit more of an edge forming, and the worn area of the top of the flute, you might just see it there. We're getting closer to a cutting edge and the uh, method of removal which I'll come back to in a moment is just a sweeping movement to reduce the sharpie and see that you're getting the right angle. Here is the sixteenth bit and you can see we've got a tiny area and this one I'm not sure whether I freshened it up or not but when you get this small, as long as you've got magnification and a steady base that you can work on, you might only need one or two kisses of the uh, diamond stone, diamond lapper, just to get a fresher edge. You start a cut, you have a look and see how the sharpie is disappearing, and then once you can see your angle, I'm exaggerating. You see, I'm trying to follow the contour. And as you see the sharpie disappear on the cutting edge at the rear here, that gives you a guide as to where your pressure wants to perhaps be a little more generous. So that's only to give us a, a slight idea as to what can work. <clears throat> it's very hard to demonstrate. But uh, if you can get some of these little diamond lapping items here, something similar. If you're coming to one of these little sixteenth drills and you've run out of them, I usually get a pack of six or twelve, I can't remember, kind of little plastic containers. Uh, but if you're really stuck and want to get a little bit of edge back on the tool, uh, this method can work quite well. I would say from an eighth downwards, the three sixteenths was probably I'd re-grind that, uh, but it was easier to show because it was bigger.